the appointed hour of 7 p.m. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Rob Champetti. I have the uh, privilege of serving as the chair of the New Report ZBA. I'll take a moment and introduce the uh, rest of the members of the board. Uh, and then what we like to do, and, and it's a bit of an abridged evening this evening, there are a few requests for continuances. Um, we'll basically follow the agenda as you may have seen it or as you may have a copy of it. Otherwise, it's online uh, at the City of New Reports website for Zoning Board of Appeals. And we also publish it right here behind us. This is a contemporaneous view of the screen that we are broadcasting um, in our hybrid application of, um, of ZBA meetings. So there, there are a few online um, participants these days, but we still continue to do that so that anyone who is remote and wishes to participate online can do so. Uh, and they can see everything that's being referenced. They can see any materials that are being um, uh, uh, spoken about uh, or presented to the board or presented by applicants. So uh, without further ado, I'll take a moment. I'll introduce the board. We'll establish a roll call just to determine that we have a quorum. We can conduct business of this evening. Um, I'll then just do a quick um, lay of the land on, on how the flow of these hearings go. I'll be very, I'll do something that's very unlawyerly and I'll be brief. I'll be as brief as possible. But I, I always like to do that for anyone online and anyone in the room that's not familiar, though I suspect that many of you are already uh, more than familiar. So to my immediate left, um, uh, I'll introduce Mr. Ken Swanton, our vice chair. To his left, Stephen Delisle, secretary. To his left, Gregory Bennett, um, member. And to his left, Walter Bud Shannon, member. We have also participating remotely because um, I uh, regrettably she is under the weather. We have Miss Lynn Scow. She's not here yet. And she's not on yet. Um, and um, so, and uh, of course, myself, Rob Champetti, we have one, two, three, for five members of the ZBA, I'm going to take roll. We'll allow Ms. Scout to log on when she's available. Um, we um, want to make sure we have a quorum, and in order to have a quorum, we must at least have four uh, voting members of the ZBA. Of course, there are five here, and we'll take roll. Roll call, establish that, and I will um, I'll designate who our voting members are, and to the extent we have any alternates. We'll then jump right into our public hearings, but before we do that, I'll just go through a quick flow of how each application is handled. I will tell you that of the applications on our agenda, we have 14 Payton Street, one R. Horton Street, one Flora Street, uh, and 87 High Street. We have those four applications, three requests for continuance, um, one due to um, uh, due to illness, uh, and I don't know what the circumstances are for the others, but it could be that as well. Uh, so we'll always do those first just in case anyone's here and wishes to be heard or came here with the anticipation of speaking in connection with an application that is being uh, continued and not heard substantively this evening. We we don't want our fellow uh, neighbors and, and friends and residents of New Report to sit in an audience waiting only to be told it's time to go home, we're not gonna do any business. So we try to do that as a courtesy. Um, okay, so uh, calling the roll, the New Report Zoning Board of Appeals for the hearing evening of January 9th, 2024. Um, Mr. Ken Swanton. Here. Mr. Stephen Delisle. Here. Mr. Gregory Bennett. Here. Mr. Walter Channon. Here. Uh, Ms. Lynn Scout. Here. Thank you. Um, and um, Rob Champetti, I'm here. That is six present. Um, that establishes our quorum. And thank you for our e for the evening and for legal reference. Our voting members uh, this evening uh, will be um, myself, Ken Swanton, Stephen Delisle, Gregory Bennett, uh, and Walter Channon, and Ms. Scout uh, as our uh, our associate member of ZBA serves uh, and will deliberate and participate in every way except voting unless there is a, um, a conflict or recusal by another member, in which case Ms. Scow will be the um, the alternate voting member. All right, so with that, um, allow me to just take a moment and we, we can go through the um, matters that are on our agenda for which we have received requests for continuances. We can make sure that we address those in case anyone's here um, in connection with those. we um, The first matter that's before us is a continuation, the application of John Padden and Julie Christie, care of Lisa Mead, Mead, Talibin, and Costa, LLC. The application address is 14 Payson Street. This was continued from November 28th, 2023, and the application is a special permit for nonconformities um, to renovate a single family house. Uh, this matter, uh, due to illness, I'm told, is the, the applicant's Council has requested a continuance to February 13th, which is our, is that right? February 13th. Yes. Um, that is our first hearing date of um, February. And uh, so that would be Tuesday, February 13th. Um, members of the CBA, any comments? Um, 
any uh, deliberation or in the absence of either, uh, does anyone wish to make a motion to continue the matter? And a second. I will move that we continue the matter to the date you mentioned. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Stiller. Uh, motion made. Do we have a second? Uh, second. Oh, you got, right. it, you got it. I got it. And Mr. Channon second. So motions made uh, by Mr. by Mr. Swanton and seconded by Mr. Channon on the um, uh, on the continuation of 14 Payton Street to the hearing of February 13, 2024. Calling the roll, Mr. Uh, Mr. Swanton. Yes. Mr. Lau. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Mr. Channon. Yes. Ms. Scout. Yes. Any of them? Yes. There's five in the affirmative. I'm sorry. That's six in the affirmative. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Matter is continued to 213. Yeah. Um, next on our agenda is the application for 1R Horton Street. Uh, this is the application of Matthew and Kaylee uh, Withington, care of Lisa Mead, Mead, Tyler, and Costa, LLC. Eight, uh, this is also a continuation from our last hearing of November 28th, 2023. And this application is a request for a special permit for nonconformance. Uh, also, the applicant's counsel. Uh, due to illness, has made a request for uh, continuance to the second hearing of January 2024, which is our hearing dated January 23rd. Um, any comments, uh, deliberations? And in the absence of that, do, um, do any members, uh, is there a member of the CBA with a motion to approve the request for continuation in a second? <clears throat> I'll make that motion. Very good. Um, and then uh, we have a second. I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Delisle. So motion is made by Mr. Swanson and seconded by Mr. Delisle. And the uh, motion is to continue 1R Fulton Street to 123-24. Calling the roll, Mr. Swanson. Yes. Mr. Delisle. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Mr. Channing. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Chair Penny, yes, that's six in the affirmative. Eyes have it. Motion carries. Matter on 1R Fulton Street is continued to 123-24. Um, finally, jumping out of order, the... Um, Third and final matter, which uh, for which we've received a request to continue. This is the matter of Matt Keeley, 87 High Street. This is a special permit request to demolition, to demolish an existing historic structure and rebuild a structure of the same size in the same location. Um, though we've had a request for a continuance uh, by the applicant um, to what date was that? Uh, to 123. 123, 2024. Um, I, um, I will ask if there's any comment, deliberation, and uh, thank you. And uh, Good evening, Jared Arderman, uh, resident 83 High Street. I'm not going to speak on the merits of the continuation. I don't have any objection to the continuation as an abutter, um, but I, I do want to suggest uh, there is a deadline uh, for the board to hire uh, a specialist to do the conditions study and uh, conditions report at seven days after you open the hearing. I don't think you're opening it. I think you're continuing it. Correct. But you may want to consider, you know, getting a jump on it. It's really as a courtesy to the applicant, just to save them time if you are disposed to hire someone. Um, and uh, uh, the name that I've heard uh, is Aaron Sturgis, I think is a qualified person. I don't know him personally, but uh, I just passing that on. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Eggman. Um and, uh, and correctly that uh, we are, we're not um, we're not opening the application, uh, but just addressing the continuation. Though um, we appreciate, I certainly appreciate. We appreciate the notion of being efficient when it comes to time. Yes. Stephanie with 1593 High Street. I'm also in a butter at 87 High Street. And um, I thank uh, Jared Eigerman for suggesting that. I, I agree with it. I um, I have reached out to the Newburyport Preservation Trust about this. Um, and they will, when the time comes, um, they will be testifying um, themselves. They were not able to attend today, but I um, they did ask me to let you know that they also would like um, to ask the ZBA to engage a specialist for this, and their recommendation is Aaron Sturgis. Um, his company is Preservation Timber Framing. Thank you. Preservation Timber Timber Framing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else in the audience who may wish to be heard before the uh, ZBA takes on the uh, request for continuance? 
Seeing no further hands, um, members of the ZBA, any deliberations, comments, comments in light of what we've heard from uh, members of the public um, who have spoken on the request for continuance? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. You know, in my four years here, I, I've never seen a request to demolish a building from the 1700s in its entirety. Um, so we've never really exercised the question of, you know, do we hire an expert to look at the same data and, and decide whether it's uh, it's a candidate for demolition or whether the, you know, in this case, the ordinance is asking us to make sure it is. Um, anyway, I just think it's good that folks here brought up uh, this comment because even though we haven't opened it yet, we can at least be thinking about it. You know, if we only have seven days, um, you know, there's not a lot of time in there. So I, I guess I'm, I, I'm appreciative that people have raised this and, and even suggested a name. In fact, that name rang a bell, and then I think one of my colleagues had work done by that person on their structure. Um, but anyway, I just, it's unusual for us to, to be in this situation. Uh, and so it's good to have that heads up. So I appreciate that. I, I agree, and I appreciate that. Um, any other comments? Mr. Lyle? I have done. Mr. Ben? No, I don't. Mr. Shannon? Oh. Um, Ms. Scout? Any comments on what we've heard so far? No additional comments. Thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll add a comment. I, um, I, 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 I know you've heard me say this before, and I, I don't. It's no red badge of courage necessarily, though. I'm very proud of having served as long as I have. But I always say I've been on this board since 2002, and um, I've seen, I've seen a lot. I drive around the city, and I proudly see the good, the bad, the highs, the lows, the things we aspire to do before. I say to myself, I wish. We could have done that one better or proudly hey, we did that one well. Um, there's 22 years of that. I, I In that short tenure over the span of the, the city's long, you know, centennial tenure of many centuries, I have never seen a request like that either. I do not presume to have the expertise um, to evaluate that as a lay person of architectural <clears throat> heritage, though a student of it. I am not an expert um, or fancy myself an expert in it. I would want to surround ourselves with the ether of as much expertise to tell us what we're looking at and whether representations of we're being presented with are, um, you know, are sound and alternatives are explored and things of that nature. I, I, I as just one voting member, could not conceive of a, of a more apropos example of of being as fastidious as as is reasonable and then so given the architectural heritage and irreplaceability of that, you know, that architectural heritage of the city, this being, I believe, just an age alone, an example. And um, so I am all, I'm all for the notion of conditions, especially conditions that would, that would allow us to get a seven day advance jump on our first <clears throat> opening of this. We, we are given up to seven days after the opening, but that doesn't mean we have to wait until the opening. Um, we can lean into it, especially given the lead time that's probably necessary to, to get into the granular um, details of this work. So um, those are my thoughts, and I don't know if any members agree, but I will put it out for a motion and see if a condition shows up. Um, and uh, But I, um, I think that was, that was how I thought. Um, any further comments, members of the audience? Anyone wish to say anything further before we go into a motion? All right, um, do we have a motion to continue? And if so, a second. And if so, uh, any conditions, uh, feel free. I'll move uh, that the request to continue 87 High Street, CSP-23-7 uh, to January 23, 2024 be granted. I further move that uh, the Joint Board of Appeals uh, retain uh, an expert to assist as an evaluation as permitted under the ordinance. Do we do we need to and thank you, Mr. Bennett? Do we need to um, identify who? What, what's the process by which we engage peer review to evaluate this? Well, we need to address it at this point and okay, identify can, the next but, person with the motion we make, but you vote to engage that select list. We we have our vote. The planning office to. Do we vote? Do do we include a specialist by name if we if we were inclined? May members do that? Is that is that something? Is that is that a little too uh, detailed for this stage, or do we address that with the office? 
we should address it in the office. Okay. Fair. All right. Um, anyway, uh, thank you, Mr. Bennett. That was just my sort of parenthetical question. So we have a motion to continue as requested to 123 2024 um, with the condition uh, that the ZBA uh, engage a, a, a peer review expert um, to evaluate uh, the property and the application and the architectural details, uh, et cetera. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Was that fair? I didn't mean to. I, I didn't mean to take any authorship. <laughs> Thank you, Rex, but you made it spot on. Okay. Um, okay. Motion to be made by Mr. Bennett, seconded by Mr. Swanton, calling the roll on the motion to continue. Uh, Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Delisle? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Uh, Ms. Scout? Yes. Rob Champetti? Yes. Um, that's six in the affirmative. Um, the ayes have the motion with condition carries. Thank you, Thank uh, you for much. your comments this evening as well, Stephanie and uh, Jared. Uh, okay. That concludes the three matters that we had um, to be continued. That leaves us with just one substantive matter, uh, which we'll move forward on now. <laughs> this is the um, the application of Mr. John S. Sava, One Flora Street. Uh, this is a special permit request for non-conformities. Uh, the applicant seeks all necessary permits, permissions, uh, and um, uh, and uh, approvals to change the height and upward and lateral extensions of a pre-existing non-conforming setback. <coughs> at the upper deck of one floor street. Uh, Mr. Sala. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Mr. Chairman and board members, thank you for what you do coming out on a night like this. <laughs> um, John Saba, 25 L M Street, New Report, and represent Middle Road Acquisition LFC. Chris Saba, manager. And what I think I'll do is I'll just read it, it's okay. I know Lisa B does that on page, but I can do that. Um, as per our zoning determination is prepared by the zoning administrator, we are applying for a special permit to increase the size of an existing single story 1950s ranch house by adding an additional second floor, but staying within the existing footprint. This would be our upward extension. There is presently uh, one bedroom, and we will be adding an additional bedroom for a total of two. Just a side note, there were two bedrooms there at one point, and the owner took one away and made it one bedroom, but that was quite a while ago, so we, we can't go with three bedrooms. The new second-story balcony will be extending into an existing non-conforming setback above the existing porch below, but not encroaching on that any more into that uh, setback. In an effort to lower the addition, we have lowered the pitch of the roof, resulting in a house that we feel will not be more substantially detrimental to the neighborhood than the pre-existing structure or use. We're looking for relief from the board to enable us to proceed with the addition that is in harmony with Old Point Road and our surrounding residences. The new home will be Constructed uh, abiding to our stretch code using cement based siding with a metal roof, which allows us actually to go with a lower pitch and high performance windows and doors. Um, on January 2nd, actually a week ago tonight, we received unanimous approval from the Conservation Commission. And uh, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to present this new addition to the island. So if there are any questions, um, that's our site plan. It's um, it's pretty basic. We're really not doing anything to the to the site, um, touching it very lightly. And that was our intent. Um, the rendering shows, you know, a white on white, which I know is a little tiring and we're not going to be doing that, but I don't think you're going to be commenting on the color particularly. Um, yeah, the, the FAR, we went to pains to uh, come on, come in under 25. And from my experience, we don't want to go for a, a variance or anything over 25, no matter what the amount of variance. So we actually brought the house back foot so it is going to be costly but 
the bearing point for the house will now no longer be on the foundation, but we'll put a beam in the basement. We follow that all the way up. So the top floor will be 30 by 20 and not uh, 31 by 20. So yeah, all the setbacks, all the heights, we've been to the neighbors, they don't have any problems with this. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a cute house. Uh, and I, and it's not an architectural term, I don't think, but um, I think that it'll, it'll work well where it is. Uh, great spot. Um, yeah, so that is it in front of you. Very good. Thank you for setting any questions. We, we may. We'll, we'll, we'll do the rounds. Okay. Um, thank you for that presentation. Uh, we'll close that portion of the public hearing uh, and go to uh, public comment. Uh, seeing only two individuals in the room, I will uh, ask for a show of hands to anyone who wish to, wishes to speak. Um, Hi, John. Hi, Chris. I, I am the mother. Um, Excellent. Uh, may I ask you, just so that we can record it properly, would, could I ask you to come to the back to the podium just so that we can... We well, can this. because we're still doing hybrid, we um, we have to uh, we have to afford folks online to hear. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, and then just are there people us, online too for comment? Uh, people there's are on. Yeah, there's one person online. So we uh, we always do a in the room first, and then we'll see if anyone wishes to speak who might be following online. Okay. Uh, and I if we could just get your name address. Chatty Moore, one nineteen Oak Point Road. Thank you. I had a question about the height. It's kind of awkward because I know John. <laughs> but I think this is a fix and flip, and I'm a permanent resident, and um, this has sort of happened to me before, coming out of town every summer. Um, some experiences were requested and approved, and I wasn't around to sit. I don't know if that would matter at all anyway, but um, I just would like to know how the mean height is calculated, and is that uh, is the cupola on top of that? Part of the that it's 22, it's not 37. So I just reviewed yeah. the Conservation Commission meeting notes and looked at that plan, and um, it was a little confusing. The way I can I can try to address that, and certainly I'll invite um, Mr. or Mr. Sava to um, address it further. But when it comes to calculation, that's a fairly just it's a rigorous standard. Um, based on our zoning code, and it is the it's the mean average between the eave and the peak of the roof, and any embellishment or roof structures such as that are non living space such as cupola, um, weather vanes, widows, widow walks, um, you know, and such are um, are not included in that um, computation, but rather the average between the eave and the peak. So pitch of roof often can change that average, which is and so. And slope, yeah. So the so the slope of you know the slope or the the IE pitch of any roof um, could stretch out that average where that you know, where that falls in land in right. linear vertical yeah you know, measure from the from the uh, from the ground. I don't know if that is uh, helpful as an explanation. Yeah, I didn't know that that didn't get covered. Yeah, those um, those adornment are architectural embellishments that mm -hmm. if they so are not, so how do you access the roof deck? Yeah. Good. Um, a set of stairs, um, ship stairs actually that go up, and then there's an access hatch that goes into the, the space that we have in the living room and kitchen. That's where the mechanical equipment's going to be, and that's how we get out of the trap door within that within that cool. Okay. okay, that's how we get, and that actually allows us by code to access that. Um, that mechanical work, which is in the May I ask a question, Mr. Saba? Maybe yeah. follow up to the to the question that we've just heard. What is the um, what is the measure um, based on your calcs? Um, yeah, it's very low. Um, Twenty-two point five eight feet to the mean height. So that's that's and that's a three. It's a three three one pitch. Three and a quarter pitch. So it's a very low pitch, and we do that in pitch. I did the dark drawing I saw it had 37.5 um, on top of the 22.7. So I didn't know where the 37.5 came from. Which um, which drawing? Is there, is there a, I didn't see a drawing that had that measure. Yeah, over 37.5. Oh, that was right behind it. Yeah, um, that's an elevation height off, off grade. Um, 
from ground to ground. yeah that's 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 from a benchmark and it's also to the top which, which is different than top, the, the height the, yeah so yeah. so when it comes to from a zoning standpoint the definition of height um we use a calculus of mean between even peak yeah. uh, of the roof but when we want to know how high is it above the earth um at its highest point no matter what that is there's an additional calculus which says from the grade level at me, uh, this is the highest structural point of the structure, whether it's a weather vane or a flagpole or you know what have you. So I think that if, if I'm looking at this correctly, and Mr. Sutton correct me if I'm wrong, that 37 is measured from mean grade to the precipice of that cupola. Yeah, that again, that's um, uh, that is a height which is a uh, surveyor's grade Understood. and not an architectural grade. We actually, the mean height that we have is taken, as you said, from the mean front front of the house, which is a higher elevation grade-wise, mm -hmm. to the base, and half of that. And then from that point up, you have the pitch of the roof. Right. So that's why it's so low. And in relation to you know, all the new houses around us is quite a low structure considering what we're trying to do. We're surrounded with new houses in a row quite a bit higher. Um, and the only reason we can do that also is we have a metal roof. Um, and you can go with a lower pitch with a standing seam metal roof. And we like the looks of that. And okay. That's how it is a metal roof also. But right. so we, we could have gained some real cathedral ceiling look. If we had a higher pitch on it, but we didn't want to do that because that would have been a higher statement for the house that we wouldn't need. Yeah. Very good. Hill. Um, <laughs> was there was, was there any was there any further questions? No, I just wanted to know that um, because as I said, of course. I'm staring at a wall in the opposite direction <laughs> because I wasn't around. I guess. No, very um, good. I, I, Understand that. Um, and I didn't know how it was calculated, and I wasn't sure other people were going to be here in time. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I could. I I'm support of what you know. Of course, what you're going to do. I know it's a it's a turnover project, but well, it's it might not be that. It might not be. You know, we really like uh, my kids are in Montana and Colorado, but they're really saltwater people, and we'd like to keep this in the family and see if we can. Yeah, we might try to Airbnb or Verbo it yeah. in order to get enough time so that we can enjoy it as a family. Very good. Um, thank you for. Um, it's not a variance, right? right? So it's, it's all non conforming. It's all conforming. Oh, it's all conforming. Yeah. And then some. Um, okay. Thank you very much no, uh, thank to you both. I appreciate the, the commentary. We have one person online to the extent um, is there anyone uh, that is, there's no other people in the room from whom we haven't heard, so I'll assume there are no new hands in the room. So I'll go to our uh, very uh, short list of online attendees. Uh, and it looks like we have just um, one individual online and I'll see if there's any desire to want to raise your hand. Um, looks like uh, Chris um, Orwasik, uh, if you wish to be heard, feel free to just raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Um, and if not, we will move along. Going once, going twice. All right, I see uh, no further hands online or in the room. We will go ahead and close the public comment portion of the public hearing and go to questions from the board, meeting with Mr. Spong. I actually don't have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> Do what? I don't have any questions either. Mr. Benick. Um, yeah, just one, Mr. Sava. I, I'm just trying to, I didn't get a chance to take a look at this. Uh, Take a ride on a mile in this afternoon. So um, I'm just curious. You advise that the size and scale of this is consistent with the neighborhood. Can you comment a bit on that a little What's further that? in terms of the size and how it relates to other homes in the neighborhood? The size and scale relates to the other homes in the Oh, it's it's quite it, it's let's put it this way. It's a little bit higher than. A lot of the houses that haven't had work done to it. But it's quite a bit lower than a lot of the houses that have been redone. Uh, within the, the neighborhood? Within the vernacular, it's definitely 
a lower structure. Even the house next to us, which is a single story ranch also, actually has a full height basement. And so by the time you do the calculations to their roof pitch, which is actually a little bit higher than mine, they kind of line up and that's a low house. But as you drive down, down Old Point Road, and rightfully so, I mean, a lot of them are on piles and, um, you know, when you get your car parked under it and then you get another, what, you know, a little bit room above there, you, you get some nice views of the marsh. And, they look 50 feet high. <laughs> yeah. They do. The 35 feet is, um, even on the zoning table, um, we're less than 30 feet and um, the 22 by eight is uh, pretty low. Very good. Any um, further questions? No. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, could you just uh, review? So the, the rear setback remains the same. I assume it's because of the little porch off the back or whatever it is. But you indicated the house has stepped back from the foundation to keep the fire within limits. Can you explain? Is that that hashed mark, that deep hashed no. mark? What you're looking at, um, that roof plan, is the um, uh, um, that's exactly what the house is at that plan um, that you're looking at. The, the um, original house was 31, though? 31. 31 and, by 20, so the foundation is 31 by 20. That's right. And what you're looking at there is 30 by 30 by 20. So the foundation then sticks out one foot beyond That's right. The and actual we get our new addition to fall within our FAR. Okay. And we that, had to that's where you trunk it on that. Which I didn't like to do, but I know that it never get approved if we were over 25. It's slightly under... At, 25% of 4,909, it's about 1,227 square feet. We're at yeah. 1225, and also when we reside, it'll probably bring it closer to 1,200. Okay. And that was the most creative way we could figure out how to make it fit. Right, so since the building steps back, why, why did the rear setback remain the same? Is it because there's an addition that you took up the remaining space? Well, the rear... The, <laughs> The rear setback stays the same because it's taken from the found the original 31 feet. Okay. And it's not taken from the roof plan. We right. have to go by what the concrete block is, really. And that doesn't change. So so what is the rear setback? Is it six? It's the um we can't see it from here. It's uh that's not changing. It's the um I don't have it online. Well, that change. Yeah, it's it's a, that's not changing. We're not. We're not going. We're not encroaching at all on that. We are set back. Okay. Um, so yeah. there is a foundation under that part of the building. Under the thirty. Under the. Uh, that's a gap. The sound of two Oh, okay. Back. All right. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. So you took up the room with the deck. Yeah, okay. we notched the back up uh, on right. the second floor. And the roof over it. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Um, and then I noticed there was a comment that this building is not in the floodplain. That's correct. That's one of the rare because it's up a yeah, the uh, hill so much. Was surprised and she re she actually uh, thought the whole island was in the floodplain. Right. Uh, <laughs> we know it's one of the higher places on the island. It is high. It is high. It's got a little low. We would have, we probably wouldn't have purchased it. You know, that was a big factor for us. Yeah. Doing that. I don't think we've seen too many where it says it's not in the floods. Uh, no other questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ms. Scout, any questions from you? No, I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also have no further questions that haven't already been addressed. Uh, so thank you. Um, can I ask one? Yeah, of course. A late, a late thought. Yeah. Um, are you across the street from? Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Also, not in the floodplain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very good. I don't are... know how many are, but not many. We still we'll find out after Wednesday. Right, sure. Just don't, but don't get too happy. The uh, any further questions? No, thank you. All right. Uh, we'll close that.
portion of our hearing and go into deliberations. Again, we're deliberating the uh, application, uh, the application for a special permit for nonconformance. Uh, so we'll begin with Mr. Sloan. Well, the criteria, there are two criteria. Um, the first is, are there any new nonconformities created? Uh, and there are none. Um, there are existing nonconformities, but since you're just going up, you're not really creating any new setbacks or anything, and you're not going so high as to create a height thing. Um, then the second criteria is, is, is it uh, more detrimental to the neighborhood than in, in its existing state where it's already nonconforming, as most places on Plum Island are? <laughs> um, and as I look at it, um, I know you had to take some work to get under the FAR. Yeah. I'm very appreciative that you did. Um, we've seen quite a few applications where people just kind of blow through it. Um, I have pretty consistently voted against them. But so I, I, I uh, appreciate that you uh, kept the scale of this thing within the guideline. Um, um, and as you point out, there are other buildings in the neighborhood that are considerably larger. I don't think it uh, creates a problem, and so I can support this application. Thank you. Very good. Glenn? Yeah, I would just add that I don't think I don't think this is uh, more detrimental to the neighborhood or to the pod um, than what's currently there. So I also would support this project. Good, Mr. Fennick. Uh, I echo my uh, brother's comments and agree. And, uh, Prepare to approve this application. And thank you, Mr. Chen. Yeah, uh, driving out there, I mean, it's a very small house today, making it a two story house, although it is technically twice the size, it's that so small. I, I don't think it's more detrimental. Uh, I think it does fit in with the neighborhood. There are some, <clears throat> some good size additions out in that area. There's some houses that are quite tall as well. So, with that said, I can support the application. All right, very good. And Ms. Scott. I would echo the comments of my colleagues and, and say I also appreciate the attempt to stay within within the requirements and do not think it is more detrimental to the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, I agree. Um, I think it's uh, you know well presented and modest under the circumstances, certainly, and, and thoughtful presentation. So thank you. And, um, and uh, well, thank you for your comments as well. Uh, it's important to have that as part of the fabric of what we do. You know, living there is the most relevant sort of observational impact that you can drive by 50 times and not necessarily do like that. Uh, I, uh, I have nothing further unless anyone has anything further in deliberations. Uh, I will close that portion of the public hearing and um, request a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve one uh... Laura Street, ZMC 23 32. Great. Thank you. Mr. Shannon's motion. Uh, do we have a second? Second. And Mr. Benick's second. The motion is made by Mr. Shannon and seconded by Mr. Benick on the um, request to approve a special permit for nonconformities on one Flora Street. Calling the roll, Mr. Swanton. Yes. Mr. Belisle. Yes. Mr. Benick. Yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. And uh, Ms. Scow. Yes. Rob Champany. Yes. That is 60 affirmative. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you weren't voting. Um, <laughs> uh, we got an extra. Um, Spot in the affirmative. The ayes have it. Motion carries and the application is approved. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. Have a great evening. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you, you. you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with no further public hearing right. business this evening, I will close the public hearing portion and we will go into our business meeting um, to approve our minutes of December 12th. Any comments, changes, revisions? Final one. Yeah. I left it there for you. <laughs> it was hard to find. Is it the would be more intrusive? It's uh, page two, paragraph six, third <laughs> sentence. It reads, in lighting that would more intrusive. I think you have to add the word be. I was like, did she leave that on purpose? <laughs> it's a good test. <laughs> Thank you for reading this stuff. Yes. That's good. Thank you for keeping us honest there. <laughs> Very good. Anything else? Do we have a motion to approve uh, the minutes? I'll move that we approve the minutes with the B change. Very good. Motion's made to approve the minutes with 
The change as noted, and we have a second. Second. All right, motion's made and seconded. Um, then we'll just do a uh, voice vote for approval. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention, no vote. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, the last thing we have on our agenda is um, other update. Well, we have short-term rental units. There's um, there's two matters that are uh, we have, which I think I've printed. Not we have in our materials. Um, it's the zoning amendment uh, and uh, sort of the rules of the road. Um, I don't know if anyone has had an opportunity to read it, review it, and prepare to kind of chat about it. Um, if not, we can table this for our next meeting and do it more thoroughly then. I know I'll say that while I could probably jump in and, you know, I, I don't have, I didn't have an opportunity to really dig into it. So I don't know if I'm alone in that, but uh, if I'm not, and then I propose we just put a pin in this for our next meeting and to plan to all come with an opportunity to discuss it. Just a question, Nisha. The ordinance has submitted, do you know, is that in its final form or are they still that's an expansion. I went through it fast and found like five reference errors. Yeah, so typos that, that can be corrected, um, and you know will have to be. You know, so, so we should go through it with a fine tooth comb to help. Well, them. I mean, we're not being asked to you know copy. We're we're not being asked to um, you know to serve as sort of an editor to the yeah you know, to the clerk's office or the count you know or the um, city council. But if we see things, it's like if we see something, say something. This this is part of our you know our bible of you know yeah. operation uh, okay. so it, it would be silly for us to not point out you know scrivener errors that can be corrected yeah, like they'll say drawings as required in yeah. section 9307 the, the, there's the, no discussion of a drawing yeah so <laughs> this, i'll tell you what that we should go through it and i'm sure that it will be well, welcome and revived by the, okay. uh, by, the, by the powers to uh, for us to say, hey, look, let's make it perfect since we have one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, plus every yeah. member, you know, 11 members of the council, plus the clerk's office, um, everyone's uh, in the planning office, and God knows how many hours, you know, um, planning office put into reviewing it. But if we see more eyes, the better, so that we have a tight, you know, ordinance that we can, you know, we can operate from, but also not look at and kind of sheepishly be like, oh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Achilles heel of, of a you know a hanging chad reference to something that doesn't exist in the code. So yeah, I would say let's plan to do that. That's what I perfect case in point. That's what, you know that, that's but you know but that's what I didn't have an opportunity to do yet. Okay, I'll go through it tighter. I just I just was like, well, that doesn't do that. That doesn't do that. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think that's great. But I'm I'm glad I, I too will look at it like that. I'm glad you already found some things. Um. I also want to point out, uh, Robert, I think you missed a meeting uh, that we talked a little bit about getting some input, some legal input. Um, wrote down a few questions. I actually gave them to Andy. He's still getting some input from our solicitor. Solicitor, yeah. And that I, you know, I think I heard from Andy that they just haven't <coughs> yet. I also wanted to add to that in our last meeting, uh, one of our city councilors, Connie Preston, dialed in because uh, she was also wondering. What we were learning. Um, and I just want to say that I called Connie the next day just as a follow up. Right. Um, and she was, uh, we had a very nice conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, she remains interested in what we learned as we uh, grapple with this. Uh, although I don't, I, I don't think there's actually been a flood of applications. So we have some time. Um, but anyway, I just want well, to add that. So I, I agree. Let's, let's, let's wait on it. I'm hoping we get some input. Uh, on some of the questions we discussed previously. Fantastic. All right. Anything further? Okay. So we'll just bump that to, we'll, we'll carry this over to our next agenda, Caitlin, if we could. Um, I've got no other updates from the chair. Um, any planning on those updates? I just think one that uh, Patricia, I don't know if anybody knows Patricia Peck. Ah, uh, thank you. Yes. Um, Patricia Packnick has uh, uh, submitted her, uh, her, I guess, resignation from ZBA. Uh, she, has a wonderful new uh, professional job opportunity that gives her time to uh, work on as she'd set uh, a book she'd been working on for a while. And it's academic and, and professional development that she's thrilled about. She's she shared her regret, but also shared her um, affinity for you know the work that she's done here with us. And certainly, I on our behalf, on my own behalf, I thank her uh, for her you know for her service. I, I wasn't sure if she was coming this evening. She's already let the mayor know, so we have a vacancy now. 
um, as of right now, but we still have, you know, a full board. Um, we had the rare opportunity, we had the rare circumstance, which I don't think I've seen since the mid 2000s, where we had seven, you know, seven members, five plus two, you know, associate members. So if you know, uh, if you know of anyone that may have expressed interest, I, I know Ken had been to the um, to the workshop that was hosted for city boards and commissions. Has a couple of contacts of people that may or may not still be interested, but we'll uh, see if we can help our mayor's office, planning office, find. Uh, Replacement talent, so we'll never be able to replace uh, her, uh, you know, her company. Um, we are, thank I, I'm certainly thankful to Patricia's work. So that is the deal there. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Have a great Aye. night, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Hope you feel better. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for logging in. This might be under the weather. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.